Hi there, I want to welcome you to this brand new and extremely well-made tutorial series on Maxwell Render brought to you by MaxwellZone.com. So I understand that you're very eager to start rendering cool things, but unfortunately we have to first uh, take care of some boring basics so that you're not confused uh, later on in this tutorial series. So let's get started. So the very first thing I wanted to mention is that you should really bookmark this page here, HTTPS, because it's a secure page, portal.nextlimit.com, because uh, here you can quickly contact sales or technical support. So if you haven't received your license keys, for example, you can contact sales, or if you have a technical question, this is the quickest way to um, get in touch with the support team or the sales team. And also I wanted to mention something from the download area uh, which you should download. So click on the logo here and after you've downloaded the main install, uh, make sure that you also download this texture collection because there are some Arrowway materials included with the main install, but actually the textures themselves are too big so they're not included just to save a little bit on, on the bandwidth or your download speed. So download these separately and unzip the texture collection and you should uh, browse to your Maxwell 3 install folder, go to the material database folder, textures folder, and unzip them here so that these uh, Arrowway materials can find these textures and you can use them in your scenes. Okay, so what do you actually get when you download the Maxwell install package? Uh, I noticed new users are a bit confused when they see both Studio and Maxwell and they, they're confused which is the render engine, what should they use, uh, and so on. So let's go through the Maxwell suite, its main components. So Maxwell executable, this is the GUI for the main render application. So this is Maxwell, so to speak. You don't really need any more than this to render uh, your Maxwell scenes. Uh, Studio, that's just a 3D companion application, which allows you to create, edit, and debug Maxwell render scenes. So actually I use it quite a lot for this specific purpose to debug scenes that are not rendering quite as I intended. It's very easy then to just open the uh, Maxwell scene file in studio and see if the plugin, for example, export the scene as it should have and so on. So you're not obligated to use studio uh, but you can use it, and I'm going to explain in more detail a few possible workflows, uh, because some things you might find them more efficient or faster to do. For example, set up the environment lighting in Studio after you have set up everything else uh, in your plugin, for example. The other executable is the MX network. So this takes care of running your networking uh, or your network renders. And actually, um, right now, there's a technology preview of another, a different uh, network system that is newer, more robust, and it's also included in the install package. But I'm just mentioning this because the, the official network uh, component, it's still the old one, so to speak, which is mxnetwork.executable. Uh, the third Executable is MXSED, and this stands for the Maxwell Material Editor. And with this application, you can edit uh, standalone Maxwell Material files, and you can also create standalone Maxwell Material files, which you can then reference in many different scenes, or you can upload them to, to the Maxwell Gallery, for example, so that other people can use them. Okay, so those are the main uh, important components in the Maxwell Render Suite. Next, I'll mention the three most important file types you need to know about when using Maxwell Render. So the first one is the Maxwell Scene file format, which is .mxs, and this file will contain all the geometry or reference geometry in your scene, the cameras, uh, material assignments, embedded materials, uh, but it's important to keep in mind that it will not contain any textures that those materials are using or, for example, any HDR textures you may be using for image-based lighting. So this means that if you simply try to copy this MXS file 
to another computer for rendering, it will not render because it can't find those dependencies, it can't find those textures. But in later lessons, I'm going to talk about a few workflows and a tool in Maxol that allows you to more easily transfer an entire scene and its dependencies to a different computer to, to render there. Uh, the second file format is .mxi, so this is the main render image format in Maxwell. Uh, and it's important not to confuse MXS, MXI, I've, I've seen a few people do that. So the MXI is the render that you get after you have rendered something. Uh, and uh, it's a very high dynamic range image format, which allows, among other things, for the multi-light functionality. And also one other thing that's that's cool about it is that it has a very wide color gamut so that you can do very accurate white balancing uh, which is a new tool in uh, Maxwell version 3 uh, for example so if you're familiar with digital photography think of this as your raw file so it's in linear format so usually after you render something you have to at least add a little bit of contrast because it's it's a flat looking image because it's a linear it uses a linear tone mapping so uh, that's all <laughs> to say about the MXI for now in this basic uh, beginning tutorial. Uh, the third file format is .mxm. So these are the standalone material files I mentioned before. And these are very useful because you can reference them in your scene instead of embedding a material in the scene. And that makes it so that, for example, if you have a cool looking uh, leather material, which is a standalone material file, and you make changes to this material, it will propagate, those changes will propagate to all the scenes that are using this referenced leather material. So that's why it's always a good idea when you're building your material library to save your materials uh, that you may have in a scene, save them as separate MXM files so that you may reuse them in other scenes later on. There are three possible workflows you can use with Maxwell Render. Uh, the first one is plugin based, which means that you'll be doing most or all of your scene setup within uh, your main application using one of Maxwell's many plugins. And one of the advantages here is that uh, Next Limit actually gives you for free all of Maxwell's 15 plugins that it currently has. So with every Maxwell, um, with every license of Maxwell, you can also download any plugin you want. And uh, this can be very useful, for example, if you do your modeling in a CAD application, but you wish to also animate it or, or do a camera animation in a dedicated uh, 3D applications such as, such as Cinema 4D. You can just download both plugins and uh, it won't cost you anything extra. Uh, the second workflow is mainly studio based. So this is mainly for people that don't already have a plugin for the main application they use, uh, which in this case you're you're obligated to use uh, an export option and you can uh, import into Maxwell Studio, OBJ, Alembic, uh, FBX, so a lot of different formats and you can just set up your lighting in Maxwell Studio, you can uh, uh, create materials, assign materials and so on. So this is not the preferred workflow really. If you do have a plugin for your main application, then try to, to use the Maxwell plugin because most of them are pretty complete these days. The only thing that can um, make a plugin less capable or let's say there are some functions that are missing from the plugin that are in Maxwell Studio, this depends mainly on the SDK of that main application, uh, meaning the software development kit that uh, that company offers to plugin developers. And unfortunately, some applications have a limited SDK, so then there's not a lot of uh, things that the plugin developer can do to extend the plugin. So in that case, you may be forced to use maybe a combination of these two workflows, meaning do as much as you can in the plugin. And then, for example, if it's easier or faster to set up the lighting or the cameras or the environment lighting, then switch to studio. Um, so the main disadvantage to, to this is obvious is that if you change anything in your model, in your main application, you have to re-import it into Studio. 
Um, and there is a tool in Studio that detects if a piece of geometry has the same name and then it asks you if you want to keep the material assignments and so on. So it's not such a terrible uh, workflow, but the main recommended workflow is really plugin based. And uh, as I mentioned, most of the plugins are very complete now. So you have no real reason to use Studio except for uh, debugging purposes, as I mentioned before. I think I mentioned in the beginning that even though I'm using a plugin based uh, workflow, I still use Studio um, sometimes just to check how the plugin has exported an MXS file. So I just open that MXS file in Studio and, and check to see that everything is, is uh, exported correctly in case I see a problem in the render and I don't know what's what's going on. So for that uh, debugging purpose, Maxwell Studio can be a very nice thing to have. So uh, for this reason, I want to go through some of the main keyboard shortcuts and uh, UI tips I use most of the time in Studio just to speed up your, your workflow. So let's take a look at Studio. So here I have a scene that was exported by the Rhino plugin and it's an uh, MXS file. And first of all, you have your main viewports here and the camera navigation is really simple. It's just the alt and left, middle and right mouse buttons. And you have modifier keys here. If you press alt and shift, then I'm just moving the camera and also its target. So. Let me open up a new window to sh better show you that. And by the way, I've docked it now to the interactive preview pane here, so you can see it's added it as a tab here. Um, so let me zoom in here. So this is my camera, and if I use Alt and left mouse button, I'm just rotating around the camera target, which is right here now. But if I press also shift, so alt plus shift, I'm now also moving the camera target or actually I'm just moving the camera around its own uh, position. So this can be useful sometimes. And uh, second modifier key is the control key. So if you press alt and control, then you will have much finer movements in your camera compared to just using alt, which sometimes may not be quite as accurate if you want really fine placement. So ju just use Alt and Control in that case so you, and you have much finer movement and zoom also and, and pan. Um, another two shortcut keys I use all the, all the time is C. So C for uh, Caesar. So if you press C that centers the selected object in the viewport. And if you press Shift Z, that's going to center your entire scene. That can be useful sometimes. One more thing regarding the camera that's very useful to know, and I've seen a few new users um, have problem with this. So let's say you have this, uh, this scene and you want to zoom in on this area here and you keep zooming in and zooming in and until you notice that suddenly you can't zoom in anymore. And also if you try to move the camera, it behaves very strange. And that's because the camera and the camera target have come so close, they're practically sharing the same space. So then the camera can go beyond the camera target. You can see here, if I try to zoom out again, the camera target is here. And as the camera approaches, I can't zoom in anymore. So to fix that is really simple. All you have to do is, for example, focus on the area where you want to place the camera target and then press F to focus. And then you can see that the camera target now has shifted to that plane and then it behaves normally again and it rotates around that, that camera target and I can zoom again as far as I want. Or if you don't want to focus, let me put back the camera target again. You know, you can also press uh, select an object and then press C to center that object and again the camera behaves normally because the camera target and the camera are are so uh, far away from each other more things about the ui for example if you want to scale something uniformly and i press three here 
instead of just entering three for all of these, I can just change one and then press shift enter and it's going to change all the triplets here. And the same thing if you want to move something and uh, you want to move it or sorry, if you want to scale something with these, just click the, the mouse wheel down and drag. So you can also change values like this and this works for all the numerical values. And if you press shift, that's going to change uniformly again by shift dragging. If you press control while you shift drag, that's going to make it so it changes faster. Okay, and you can also press control shift to change all of them faster. In the viewport, you can see there's some information here. If this is uh, getting in the way, just press I to make that disappear and I again to make it appear. And you can see all the shortcuts here from the display menu. And also if you turn on the info again, you can see here that you get a, an older DSLR style focus ring here that lets you know that something is in focus or not. And if you want to focus, for example, where that circle is pointing, just press F on your keyboard and that's going to set the camera target to that point. You can see again what happens <clears throat> with the focusing. Okay, so you can see this is the camera from up here. And if I change the focus point, all that does really is change the, the camera target so that it's right where the circle is pointing. And keep in mind that this works best if you are in shaded mode or any of the other shaded modes like texture decal or, or flat. If you're in bounding box or wireframe, I don't think this uh, focus works so well. A few more UI tips in the material editor here. So this is just an exact copy of the standalone uh, MX Ed. Um, to update a material, you can either click this button or I find it a lot easier, just double click the material preview. Uh, in the folders, wherever you see a folder icon like this, uh, you can drag and drop a folder on top of another folder to copy the, the path and the, and the file name. So it's smart enough to keep the, the suffix. So for example, if I change the, the file name, I drag over here, it's not going to name it PNG, it knows it's MXI. So it just changes the file name in the, in the path. So that's pretty fast. Uh, so that's about it for a very short introduction, some tips about working with Maxwell Studio a bit faster. In later lessons, I'm going to go through more details about uh, Studio, how to do custom layouts and uh, a few more things. But that's it for now.